the discussion that I'd like to have today is very much a, a positive one. Uh, it's the insights that I've gained um, over the past decade, but more importantly over the last couple of years, as I've travelled the nation and I've visited many, many farms and I've sat at the kitchen table and had many, many discussions, as well as you know, sitting in the truck and driving around the paddock and talking as we go. So I wanted to sort of bring those insights into this discussion around how large family farms and institutional agribusiness businesses um, can work together to improve productivity. So as Tiggy said, my role is general manager for um, agribusiness in Westpac. I've got a, about 180 bankers that are located in 50 regional and rural towns across Australia. 80% of those bankers come from the farm, or if they're not from the farm, they have family ties or they're passionate around regional, rural or remote Australia. We've worked very hard over the past four years, and in particular the two years that I've been in the role, that we've now got 60% of our bankers tertiary qualified. We have near 85% of our bankers that actually come from the land. So they very much are connected to what they do every day. We also have really worked hard to make sure that the majority of our bankers live and work within about three to 500 k's of where they grew up. So they're connected with community and they really do have a passion for the people that they support. And so we sort of view it as farmers banking farmers. And so it's my view that we need to be really connected and I'm very passionate about regional, rural and remote Australia and about making a difference. And in my term in role with Westpac Agribusiness, that's my intention. So that's the eyes that I'm coming with for this discussion. As I said, the, the family farm and the large institutional um, agribusiness, they're very much alike at the, at the large end of farming. And that end I'm talking about the 1% of farms. I'm talking about where they've got turnover of $5 million or above. And as mentioned, um, they do drive the majority of the, the income across the nation in the sector. Our view is that there's a lot to like about both. And it's our view that if we bring the two together, we'll actually prosper and grow. And that way, we'll drive both productivity and profitability, both in the large family farm, and we'll also drive it higher through the large institutional agribusiness. As we've talked about, agribusiness is a very seasonal business. It's a cyclical business. Um, it's a long-term investment horizon. Um, it's very important that people are passionate and are there for the right reasons. Um, we have a saying, we need people to be interested, not interesting. And so we hope, um, as we work through with our customer base, um, we align ourselves to those people which allows us to have a level of risk mitigant um, that's a natural um, DNA of the people, both the banker and the customer base, and that then allows you to move on quite quickly. As we've talked about, the greatest challenge for um, large family farms is capital. In 2013, in um, Melbourne, at the Global Food Forum, it was mentioned that there was, would be an estimated $500 million funding gap um, for Australian agriculture um, over the next three decades um, if we are to bring to life the opportunity that's presenting um, in the next 30 years with the alignment with Asia and the growth corridor across the globe in agriculture. And so 
where we're, where we're really trying to focus um, our efforts is how we can bring all the different parts together to bring that to fruition. So the strengths of the corporates. They've obviously got very good corporate governance. They've got risk mitigants. They've got a board. They think both for the short term and the long term. Their funding horizons um, are a lot longer. What are the benefits to a family farm of a corporate? The large family farms, as I go around and talk to people, you can see it. They've got family boards. They've brought the, the kids in early. Um, many, many times you sit around a kitchen table and the kids might be home from private school. They're already sitting there. They're not out playing. They're, out, they're sitting with the bank manager, listening to the conversation, discussing it with mum and dad, with nan and pop. They bring them in early. They've got trusted advisors. They operate as a board. And so I think the benefits of that learning are huge for family farms. And not just large family farms, I think at all levels we need to, con to continue to instill um, a level of robustness um, that continues to become far more professional um, into the future. I think the, the use and the, um, the work they do with how they use capital, there's a lot of learnings for the family farm. I think also it's just the, um, the investment that comes with technology and innovation and the family farm can use that in all different ways um, to drive productivity. And we can see that now with what's happening with the farms and the innovation that's driving productivity. Um, for example, we've just um, launched a partnership with um, Swarm Farms Robotics in Queensland, which launches on the 22nd of May this year. Um, and you know, we're a bank, but we're very excited about what that um, piece of equipment can actually do to Broadacre, and it's quite transferable to other crops and other industries. So I think we've just got to roll up our sleeves as a big bank and actually get involved and start to be a leader in how things are done. What do family farms bring to corporates? It's been mentioned many times already today. A family farm or a large family farm, they're custodians of the land. They're passionate. They live and breathe it. It's who they are. To bring that to a corporate operating model, I believe, is just gold. And so I see it every day. You've got far more of the corporates are looking to, to entice the, um, the young farmer, daughter, son, into their operating business to get some of that goodness and get some of that passion and alignment with the land and in turn instill a whole different DNA within their workforce. So I think there's a lot of different things that the family farms can bring um, to corporate world. And you know, they're great advocates of their region, their community, and just that relationship, that the connection that can make with large institutional corporate agribusiness with the communities through family farms, um, again, is something that a lot of people are searching for. What I'd like to do now is, is probably share with you a couple of stories about how we've, we've seen this come to life um, over recent times. The first one's a, a, young, a young farmer, a um, family farmer, 20,000 hectare broad acre cropping and livestock operation. He went to school, private school. He went to university. He worked overseas. Um, he come back through into a corporate institutional agribusiness business. And then from then, as he's having a family, he's brought, he's brought back in and come back to the farm. But what he's been able to do in the last three or four years in particular, he's brought all that corporate know-how, the robustness, the corporate governance, um, the, the um, risk mitigants that would be um, discussed day in, day out in a corporate, and he's brought it back to the kitchen table. 
And with that, he's really been able to um, step change the business. He's also been able to link his relationships that he's had previously in his corporate world with his family farm. And in turn now, he's entered into different funding arrangements um, where he's got partnerships in place to build his scale, um, as well as he's already been, um, he started to be a thought leader in his industry. So that's one example of where you've got a, a small, you know, a, a young, a son that's gone from a sizable family farm, moved into the corporate world, and then brought back all the goodness. Sorry, my tongue was getting too dry. <laughs> um, to make, you know, the benefit everybody. Um, there's another one similar, a uh, young man studied overseas um, in the beef industry, worked in verticals overseas, knew exactly what he needed to learn. So he went and worked in corporate agribusiness um, offshore. And now he's brought that back into his family business who has gone to um, a market leading position now globally with what they've been able to do. And it's all because he's brought the know-how um, back um, from that corporate institution. So there are two examples of where you've got um, people that you know have come, grown up on the farm, have studied, have gone off offshore or even domestically into large institutional agribusinesses, and then brought that back to the farm, and in turn grown their operation, both you know from a um, profitability perspective, scale perspective, um, and also from a productivity perspective. So I'm hoping you can see that to me, this is really um, all leading edge. Um, it's been happening for a long time. I just think it's becoming more and more the norm. And I think it's also now moving down through um, not just the large top end of family farms. The more you talk to a farmer, the more examples this is happening. And so I'm excited about the prospects of if we continue to build that movement of what that can do both for the large family farm and the family farm, um, and also how we're going to help the large corporate institutional agribusiness banks, because, I mean companies, because I believe the um, place, there's a place for both. They both need to be very, very healthy. And, and to me, it's about how one works for the other and vice versa. So in closing, it is all about collaboration. It is all about sharing. Um, I think both should see each other as their best friend. I, should, I think they're both each other's best coach. And I, I really think the theme that has come through from what I've, I hope you've picked up is this is about the future. It's about the young farmer. It's, I believe, and that's why I, I started with what I did was we have really re-engineered our workforce in Westpac. We've actually reduced the average age of our bankers um, over the last five years from 51 years of age to 39. We still have plenty of experience and we still have plenty of old, older bankers, probably such as myself, that have the experience, but we are there to serve. We're motivated by mentoring, we're motivated by bringing through the new generation, the younger farmer. Um, and so what we're trying to do is align our workforce with the demographic and the future farmer for the decades to come. And we know that young farmers are into collaboration and sharing. And so I'm of the belief over the next decade, um, the debate won't be which one's more profitable or which one's more productive. It'll be more how can we help each other um, and how can we both be successful together to make agriculture in Australia a far stronger um, business than it is today. So thank you.